is us, right? Is We're us. unstoppable. We're <laughs> unstoppable. All right. So welcome we to the first podcast for Mindful Social Marketing this year. It's 2016. And I know that a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I'm getting into my New Year's resolutions and 2015 was good or 2015 was bad, but 2016 is going to rock. So let's talk about how can we really make that happen instead of it just being kind of a dead New Year's resolution we regret in three days or a month? How do we do that? Yeah, how do we do that? Oh, I'm gonna make, take a deep breath, right? <laughs> <clears throat> I think um, one thing that I do as a practice that I think is really, really helpful is before stepping into the new year is taking stock of the previous year and looking at um, you know what you know what didn't I get done last year that I really wanted to do. And, you know, why didn't that happen? Um, because I don't know about you, but I set some audacious goals for myself. And then there are some simple goals. And whether they're audacious or simple, they can both of them not get done. And so I like to look at that so that when I look at 2016, I can be a higher version of myself and look at how I'm going to achieve those things this year. And the way I do it is I say in 2015, what did I breathe into? My and in 2015, <laughs> you brought, you breathed in puppies or dogs, right? So in 2015, what did I take in? You know, what were the lessons that I gained? What did I learn? Um, you know, what, what were those painful points, those, those pieces of suffering, and what did I get out of that? Because we will continue to get the lessons until we've learned them. And there are certain lessons that I would be very pleased not to have to repeat, um, quite honestly. So, so I like to learn it and move on. And um, then the second piece to that is what did I – exhale out what did i breathe out into 2015 what did i make manifest what did what did i give other people what were my creations last year and some of them i'm really proud of and some of them i'm not you know so sometimes when i have been particularly impatient with my son who can he's you know you've heard of the thorn in the side and my son is definitely a thorn for me at times he's my biggest He's, he's the person that pushes me to grow, and there's definitely no let up ever. And anyone who has a child with a neurodevelopmental disability knows exactly what I'm talking about. And um, life is, is hard mm -hmm. sometimes. It's tough. It's challenging. And, um, you know, I aspire. <laughs> I haven't got there yet. I have not reached this, this pinnacle yet that I aspire to be compassionate in the midst of my own triggers and my own suffering and my own scary places. And um, so looking at what did I, what did I make manifest last year and what do I want to do this year? Um, and, and how do I exactly plan on doing that? Because here's why I don't think New Year's resolutions work. New Year's resolutions don't work because typically they are good intentions, um, or I like to call them dreams. And I've worked with people long enough for as many years as I have in coaching, in consulting, and in speaking to tell you that people want this, but they're only willing to work at this. Because it takes <laughs> discipline. It takes commitment, it takes action, it takes doing something to get this that we all want. Um, and very few people really wanna put in the work to do that. And I'm mm -hmm. challenging myself to be mm -hmm. that person because I've done this a lot. I mean, I resonate here, I don't get this, I really do. But you know, when you look at those people and you know, they're currently living right now in, in our, world and we look at them and we go, wow, you know, I'm so proud of what they've done, their accomplishments and, and what they're giving and what they're achieving and what they've built. But, you know, those people have worked hard for that. It doesn't just come. And so, you know, we, we can want all we want, 
but we will never get or achieve or make manifest in the world any of that unless we're willing to dive in and commit. And committing mm -hmm. means being disciplined. Mm -hmm. Being disciplined is much more than making a New Year's resolution. I mean, how many resolutions have you made to yourself, Janet? How many promises? I'm going to put it that way because it's beyond resolutions. <laughs> Let's just talk real here because, you know, that's what you're going to get from me anyway. <laughs> Whether anybody likes it or not, I can't help myself. We know but that already. How many times <laughs> have you promised yourself something and not shown up? Mm. Right? A lot. A lot. Oh. I think we all have. Yeah. I think we've all made those promises and you know, and I don't make resolutions anymore. I quit that a long time ago, but I still do make those promises, you know, and I went through and cleaned out all my closets for the ninth year in a row, but I still got all the junk that I got last year after I got rid of the junk I had last you right. know, the year before. So, you know, I think we all fall down on that. So what's the key here? Is it the quality of the promises? Is it setting the bar? Well, what is it? I actually think that it is, we want the vision, right? We have a vision. That's why we make a promise to ourselves. Whether the vision is a healthier version of ourselves or the vision is more prosperity in, in our professional career, or if the vision is personal in nature, you know, um, it doesn't matter what the vision mm -hmm. is. We want that. But what we haven't calculated, what we failed to calculate is what it's going to take from us to get that. And so that's where it falls apart. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I'm working with someone or a group or a company, or frankly, when I'm working with myself, it's the same thing. There, <laughs> come on now, we're all on this together, right? So it's the same thing. Doesn't matter if I'm working with me or, or I'm working with an organization or an individual what has to happen is we have to calculate what it's going to take to get from here to here and be very conscious, very present about what it's going to take. And then what we do is we work backward. I do that all the time. So you have your vision of what you want. Now you're going to work backward to where you're at and figure out the logical steps that you're going to need to take to get there. And that's how you do it. Whether you're a giant company trying to restructure, you know, your organizational culture or increase your sales and or, you know, shift your marketing to be more personalized and, and hit those customer touch points or mm -hmm. me wanting to be this kind of mom at home, even in extreme challenges. And I'm here. <laughs> I got to figure what's it going to take to get here. And, you know, for me this year to be really transparent because that's the best way I know how is that in order for me to, to bridge this gap, I've got to work on myself because my triggers when mm. I get really um, pushed to the edge and I just can't take it anymore, I have to figure out how can I respond versus react when we've not slept all night because you can't get your teenager to sleep and you can't let them stay up because it's dangerous to let a teenager who has some issues wander around the house alone at night or maybe leave, right? So when we haven't slept and we're tired and we're depleted, how can we still be that higher minded, very spiritually intact, compassionate being um, that's what I'd like to attain. And that's why my biggest joke is I really, really, really want to know what a living spiritual guru would do after a weekend with my kid. I just want to see it. Okay. Maybe it's just silly little sneaky fun, but I want to see it. I want to know what they would do because first of all, I need to learn. Second of all, if they crack just one little bit, I'm going to have some pleasure in that. <laughs> sure. There you are. 
you know, we all struggle with that in in all of the situations, you know, whether it's a work situation or some kind of a corporate situation. And we need to be able to step outside of ourselves and look at it for a little bit and say, OK, how could I be handling this differently? Is there anything I can do or should I be just accepting it and being right. with it where it is right now? Because well, you can't you always know, change it. The only thing we can change, Janet, is ourselves. Right. That's the only thing we can change. I can't yeah. change the people I work with. I can't change my kid. I can't change my spouse. I can't change anything except myself. And how I shift everything is through growing, maturing, and increasing my measure of wisdom so that I can mm. perceive the truth. Because once I perceive the truth of any situation, there's no longer a trigger there because we see it for what it is. And, and that's really oh, yeah. how I yeah. move in my life is to try to catch myself when I do feel weak, I do feel vulnerable, or I do feel um, trapped in maybe a limiting belief or an old pattern that no longer serves my highest or I am getting caught in the drama of a situation. And to rise above that means having a higher vision so that you have clarity around what really is happening. And once we realize what's really happening, it's not about the other person. It's not about anything other than, I think, big lessons in our journey for us. Because I know, at my spiritual core, I know anything that drives me bananas about somebody else is something that is alive in me that I can't see. And that's a tough pill to swallow sometimes. But you know, if you can have the courage, and it takes a lot of courage, to say to yourself, I can see where I do that sometimes. And when you do that, mm -hmm. it shifts everything because it really is a reflection. We wouldn't be triggered if it wasn't a reflection of our own shadow, right? And it's painful mm -hmm. to see our shadows. And um, I think that's part of that growth process. A lot of um, what I do is using Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey. And it's mm -hmm. a brilliant Great way book. to take a look at life. And it's a brilliant way to, um, I, I think, start off a new year. So like last night, I did a webinar uh, for my Maverick Mastery group coaching program. And, and it was awesome because it's the beginning of a new year. There's all kinds of energy around that. And there's enthusiasm for new things. And so um, it was really starting again on that hero's journey. And once you receive that call to adventure, and that call to adventure can be that gnawing inside that says, you know what, I really need to get serious about eating more healthy, or I really need to focus on finishing that book I've been going to write for like the past 10 years. Whatever it is, that could be your call to adventure. And because it doesn't happen overnight, it is, it is a journey and there are cycles on that journey, just as clear and specific as we know there are cycles in grief. And so starting on this journey, embarking on a brand new, fresh year can be really, really exciting. But also, as you and I talked about um, from even the blog post I put up um, Sunday, is that it can also be scary. It can be scary because mm. deep down inside, we we know ourselves. Even if we're not being conscious about it, we know the times that we've betrayed ourselves. We know how many promises we've never kept. And we can get excited about a new way of being or a new endeavor, but on the flip side can be a little bit nervous about whether or not we're really gonna follow through or we're really going to be able to do it this year. Mm -hmm. You know, because how come we haven't done it mm -hmm. so far? Resolute. And we all have Resolute. those things, Resolute. right? Regret. Isn't there something you've always wanted to do and yet you mm -hmm. still haven't done it yet? Every day. <laughs> Every day. I, I think planning. I, I planned. Yeah, yeah, I haven't done it yet. I think the thing is, is to really get. I think the thing is, is to really get yeah. two things. 
to get past being mm-hmm. guilty about that because then you're just dwelling and being guilty about it and figure out how you're going to get off your ass and do it. Or if it's really an attainable goal at this time, I think one of the things you said earlier about planning for it is really crucial. Making a resolution doesn't do you any good at all. If you have a plan on how you're going to get there and Mm -hmm. what it's going to take, do it. Because then, well, and and remember, you know, any of these emotions that cause us suffering, such as guilt, remorse, regret, those are all misperceptions. I mean, again, I think it all goes back to, to cultivating this strong center within yourself. For me, it's a spiritual center, you know, whatever it is for anybody else is fine. But for me, when I have that and I have a feeling of guilt or regret or remorse, it is an indication that I am to learn something instead of getting lost in the emotional piece of that negative emotion it's like hey wake up why am i feeling guilty okay learn that lesson and now what are you going to do so that you can be in a place where you're feeling good about what you're doing or feel better about your behavior or your choices um and to me i think it's a trap to get lost in a negative emotion because i have never In the course of my 20 years of working with people, I have never seen anyone transformed while in a negative emotion, ever. Where you see Mm. transformation is when you can transmute that negative feeling, that suffering, that pain, when you can transmute it into a much higher place of learning. Because guess what? We are spiritual beings having a human experience and a human experience means we're going to fail. We're going to fall flat on our face. We're going to say the wrong thing. We're going to do the wrong thing. We're going to react instead of respond. And we are not going to be totally enlightened. In fact, I would say, I, Mm. I doubt any of us um, are, are enlightened already because I actually think if we were, we wouldn't be on social media. Seriously. I mean, if you're enlightened, do you really need Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest? I mean, come on, right? And if you're already enlightened, do you need a marketing team? No, you don't. So as I see it, we are all unenlightened. That's so awesome. We are all on this journey together. We all suffer. We all have pain. We all try things that don't work. We all fail miserably. But the thing that's so cool about it is, is I think it's absolutely positively delicious to be able to have a human experience. Do you realize what a gift that is? I mean, if we were already enlightened or, you know, angels or whatever, we can't do this. We don't get to do this. But because we're human beings, we get to do this. And and I think the gift that we are blind to the gift that we may not even realize until we are already gone off this planet is that emotions and feeling is a good thing. We don't need to medicate it away. We don't need to drink it away. We don't need to do all kinds of things to to suppress feeling because feelings are what make this human experience so incredibly unique. The challenge is don't get lost in a feeling. Don't get trapped by a feeling. Instead, know it for what it is. It's an emotion. It's a feeling. And guess what? It's going to pass. This too shall pass. And that's the way of emotions. They never stay the same. They come and go constantly. I was so completely blown away years ago. It was 15 years ago, almost 16 years ago, my sister, my kid sister, who was a year younger than me, was uh, murdered. She was taken away from us and a violent crime. And it was absolutely horrific. My family went through a murder trial. And I remember going to her funeral because we were very close. Growing up, we shared the same bedroom. I mean, she was one year younger than me. And I'm at her funeral, I'm distraught. She's got two little kids um, that I am going to uh, parent one of them. And um, 
I'm sitting there at her funeral and I am absolutely devastated, but here's the wild thing. In the midst of my grief and my devastation, there was a moment when I thought about a green chili cheese burrito enchilada style with green sauce. <gasps> <gasps> oh my gosh. How dare you? That was my moment of enlightenment. And it only lasted like a few seconds. Cause really? you know, enlightenment for me is like one, 1,002, boom. Okay. Now you're back in your real self. But it was a moment of enlightenment for me because I realized that even in the midst of extreme suffering, pain, all of a sudden, it passed and I was hungry and thinking about Mexican food. That is the human experience. Mm. No emotion, mm. nothing. I don't care how horrible the emotion is. It never lasts forever. And we actually have the ability to transmute those negative emotions into something positive when we learn that it's just a feeling and feelings pass. They always do. So having a little compassion, so having a little compassion for yourself in a moment like that is, is really important. Yeah. And also, you know, just thinking about how our lives go forward and how obsessed <laughs> we get with work-life balance is one of the things that comes up right all the time. It's like, I should be doing this and I should be doing that. And we've got the duties at work and we got the duties at home. And in my case, they're all at the same place because I've worked at home for almost 20 years. So you said something when we talked that I thought was really great. And it is, was that it isn't about work-life balance. It's about yes. satisfaction. Because where is that line? And oh, hello, Jed. Nice to see you. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about that, you know, and and what that's how that satisfaction kind of well, exhibits itself. How we can get more. Well, of it, I mean, I want more of it. Seriously, it's 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 the silliest thing ever that we've done to ourselves by saying that that we have work and then we have life. You know, who came up with that? Because. It's life, right? It's life. It's one whole. And in that life, sometimes we do something that we label work, right? Sometimes in that life, we do something that's labeled partnering with someone or relationship. Maybe it's parenting. Maybe it's, you know, being a daughter or a son. But the thing that it is, is that it's a whole. We are whole beings, and when we have pain and suffering, it's because we're trying to split. And we're not a work self and a personal self. We're the whole deal. Mm -hmm. I think the only time work-life balance may have worked was when we actually worked on an assembly line, and we went to work, and we punched a clock, and we were in and out of work during a certain time, and the rest of the time we were at home. We don't do that anymore. It's the new age, so we got to cut the crap of bringing in this ridiculousness called work-life balance. There's no such thing. There's just life balance. It's life balance, and it's saying I'm a whole person, and I may be neglecting parts of myself because I have been um, misled into spending too much time or energy in one particular area. Again, it's a misperception. So what we need to do is we need to change our perception. And what I think is incredibly valuable is to take a look at what are the most important things to you and list them out. Like, what are your big things? What do you really, 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 really want? By the time you die, by the time you leave this planet, what do you really, really want to have experienced? Write them down. Don't think, oh, I've got them in my head. I don't need to write them down. No, you have to write this down. You write down the things that you really want to experience before you go. Then take a look at your day and look at how much time and energy you spend on things that really don't matter to you. It's amazing because in our day, amazing. a thousand things show up. They just pop up and go, attend to me now. Attend to me now. I need you to answer now. And you know, none of that's important. 
In fact, if you look at the end of your day, you just spent a whole chunk of your time on this planet doing stuff that doesn't get you any closer to the stuff you really, really want. So again, remember we were talking about earlier, look at what you want. So if work-life balance is in your vocabulary, change it to work, change it just to whole life. What, what kind of life balance do I want to have? Maybe, maybe people are struggling because they feel guilty because they're not giving enough at work. And one of their priorities is they, they want to do something specific professionally. So they feel guilty because they're not giving enough time there. Or they're feeling guilty at home because they're not really there when they're there because we have our phones, we have our tablets, we have everything with us all the time. So sometimes when we're at home, we're not really there. And we feel that hole, mm -hmm. we feel that gap. I mean, go to bed at night and say to yourself, was I really with the people that I was with tonight? And, and if you don't feel like it, if you feel like more, more and more of your social experiences are post ad hoc, where you're reliving them as a memory and you're rehashing the conversation, chances are you may not have really been there at the time it happened. And I mean present, been there. Yeah. And yeah. we extract more juice out of work and out of our kids, our spouses, our friends, our family when we're actually present with the activity that we're doing. So if you're going to do something work-wise, do it. Do it fully. Give yourself wholeheartedly to it. Be present with it. And if you're not going to do work, then give yourself fully. Be present with not doing work. And I mean, that means not thinking about work. Because whatever you are engaged in, give yourself to it. Be mm -hmm. there in it. Mm -hmm. So when you're with your beloved or you're with your kid or you're with your friends, be fully there and suck the marrow out of life. Because that is the experience that you get to take with you. And you never get that time back. Our time is finite here on this planet. And we have all drank the Kool-Aid into thinking that we have limitless days and tons of time. But you know what? The only thing you and I are guaranteed of is that this has an expiration date. This is going to end. So when you realize that, and I'm not being fatalistic. In fact, it's the opposite. It makes me more excited and juiced up about using this time right now for things that really matter to me, like people. I love the relationship. That's why everything I do is about relationships because for me, that's all we really have. Stuff, you know, things, they mm. go away. Cars break down, accidents happen, houses come and go, jobs come and go. But the one thing that we can take with us is our relationships, the difference we made in someone's life, and you know what? The difference someone else has made in ours. There are so many beautiful people and friends out there that care deeply, and we do them a disservice when we don't recognize that, when we don't see it, when we don't feel it, and we miss that. Because that is, that is what life is all about. I feel like I should have a pole pit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it's so you know, it's so true though. I think that we forget to be present oh, yeah. in what we're doing. And even with, you know, in our lives, we think we can multitask and we can do all these things at once and we can have lunch with the family and have our cell phone on the table so that we can still be paying attention to work and cover all our bases. Yeah. And it's just bullshit. You know, we don't right. need to do that. And it's something that, okay, I don't make resolutions, but it is something that I am very resolved about that I'm going to be present. If I go to a meeting, I'm turning my phone over. I'm not going to, you know, be absent. And one of the things that's really worked well for me, and this is, this is a silly thing, but, you know, we blink, I don't know, how many times a minute? 100, 200 times a minute. Sometimes if you just notice when you blink, it 
gives you a second to pause and say, okay, am I here or am I somewhere else? And just being in that place where you are right then, then you can really, you know, start to focus. And, and even if you have to chunk up your day and compartmentalize a bit, I think it helps to be more present. And that to me is totally. more satisfying. Completely. Because I think that once we really, really understand presence, we realize we are never waiting. We are never, um, there's never a difficult moment when we are truly present because we can see it for what it is. And like right now, I, I was, as I was talking, I was like, gosh, I'm really enjoying this blab chat with you, Janet, because I'm so present with you right now. And I'm so present with Jed. Hey, buddy. <laughs> it's great to see Jed. And everyone popping up on the side in the chat is just so cool because everybody that's here right now, right here, right now on this blab, we are doing this together. We are in this together. And how exquisite of a blessing is it that you and I and all of us right now, every single person on here is alive. And if you're recording this, Janet, mm -hmm. whoever's watching it right now on the recording, you're alive. You're alive. It's, Yay! It's such That's a blessing. It really is. Um, and mm -hmm. I, for one, think that sometimes I take this for granted. I do. And I, I believe that I want with all of my being this year to be truly disciplined to live what I know to be true, to live my message instead of talking about it. I feel like I've lived um, a lot of it, but last year was such a freaking test for me. I don't know about any of you who are watching this, but 2015 kicked my booty. And um, it, it's a lesson. It's a lesson. And so I've made, I mean, sweeping changes for 2016 because I absolutely positively need to feel in my integrity, living the message of whole being, whole person, and um, and I I want to cultivate those pieces. I absolutely bloody love what I do for work because it's with people, and um, I'm going to continue to dive into people the way that I love to do, and also dive into myself and do more writing. Um, take more time mm. for contemplation and quiet time. Take more time for prayer and meditation and developing that deeper spiritual aspect. And a lot of it might have to do with the fact that it's my age. I think a lot of um, things that we go through are, you know, we, we go through growth and development stages, right? And so, you know, I'm 50 mm -hmm. this year and things, you know, things are different. And, you know, besides the fact that, I got glasses this year. <laughs> you and Brian yeah, Kramer me and my in buddy class together. Brian Kramer, we both got reading glasses this year. And but you're uh, so I, young. You know, I am. I am. <laughs> but I also know that it's it's just different. I mean, after you have a half century of life experience on you, I do think you look at things a little differently than you did when you were in your thirties. You know. You know. That's so true because what happens is you go, you know yeah. what? Screw it. I'm gonna throw some of that yeah. stuff out. I'm not gonna sweat. Don't even small get me started. Stuff. I have I'm so brave now. It's like everything you've read about a woman <laughs> at this age is true. Because you know, the thing is is that mm. I I've lived through enough to go, you know what? This, 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 and this aren't important anymore. You know? Yeah, you know, I mm -hmm. got wrinkles and guess what? I don't care. You know what else I have? I have a depth, I have cultivated a depth over a life lived that to me is way more juicy and succulent and, and enjoyable than what this might look like. You know, this, this was fun, you know, 20, 30s, even my 40s. But you know, the thing is, you get to a different place. I can't explain it. And I know you can't either. You just got to live it. And so, you know, for for the, the people in their 20s, enjoy it. 30s, enjoy it. 40s, enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy my 50s. And, you know, frankly, enjoying my 50s 
is for me about enjoying other people more um, and really getting to a place where I am seeing things for what they truly are and seeing people for who they truly are versus looking at people to be a part of my experience. I'm really interested in seeing people in their own experience and learning from them, learning what it's like to not think like me. You know, I, I'm interested in surrounding myself, not with just like-minded individuals. I mean, that's fun. But I'm interested in surrounding myself with people who think differently than me because there is a juiciness to diversity. And diversity is a great way to, to grow. And I think it's dangerous for us to ever feel like we know. You know what I'm saying? Here, here. Give her some props <laughs> for that, guys. Because the minute we That's know totally true. is the minute I think we're closed <clears throat> off to learning. And um, I think I've mm -hmm. come full circle to a place of I really don't have a freaking clue, but I do know what's important to me. <laughs> and I know more about myself. And I have far more love and compassion. And I think the suffering of <laughs> 50 years. <laughs> of living and falling flat on my face. And, you know, I, I think that creates this really, really deep well of understanding for issues that other people may be going through that I don't have a clue about, you know, and I think approaching everyone with a, a better sense of compassion because, you know, we really don't know what people are going through. Certainly on social media, we don't. Can we talk about that? I mean, on social media, we're, yes, you're seeing the best of all of us. Because social media isn't some place where you're going to hang your dirty laundry, you know. I'm not going to, you know, get on social media and boohoo to the world. Because the, the thing is, is that I, I have to internally process things and work things out to come to some sort of learning, that's how I do things. And so social media for me is uh, almost an end result of the things that I've learned. I want to share the positive. I want to share uplifting messages. I want to share love. I want to share those things mostly. I mean, you guys know every now and then I, you know, Tamara's prone to a rant every now and then, but you know, you're going to get that. It's me. What's wrong with but a good I brand? Think that, um, <laughs> I think that social media can be hard for people because if you are going through a really rough patch, you see everyone else seems to be having this awesome life, a perfect business. They're wildly successful. They're incredibly abundant. They only have positive thoughts. Their kids are fabulous and their spouses are darn right huggable. <laughs> so you start to have yeah. this perception and they only buy on social. You can, you know, when you're in a down <laughs> place, social media can make you feel like you suck. Your life mm -hmm. sucks. You're not doing mm -hmm. it right. And everybody else has it together. And I think that, you know, my mission going forward is I want to support, encourage, inspire, uplift. But at the same time, I also want to be as transparent and vulnerable and honest as possible so that, I don't inadvertently cause someone suffering through not being completely open and honest. That's what I want. I don't want to cause mm -hmm. someone suffering because if anyone looks at my life and thinks I have it together, they've got it all wrong. I don't have it together. I, I, I work every day on myself and for having things in place to structure in place to support myself to get to this place because I'm here and I'm trying to get to here. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I want to be uplifting and inspiring and supportive, but I never want to cause someone pain by thinking that I somehow have it all together because I don't, I'm learning just like you, just We're like everyone else. We're all a work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know that we, well, I know that we said this was going to run an hour and we've come pretty close. I don't know if you have a few more minutes. We could open up some seats for questions. Yeah. Are you open to that? Oh, that would be fun, actually. Bring it on. Let's do this. So anybody wants to jump in the seat, then uh, go ahead and, and click it and let's see who's out there. And Michael Haynes, I know you wanted to get in before, so I'm going to let you in. Hi, how are you? Hi, Michael. 
are you? I'm incredible. How are you? Ah, man, the sun is shining on me right now. Do you see that, Michael? That's good. They can find you and how to connect with you and uh, say goodbye. I would love for you guys to find me. Actually, some of you have already found me, but I would absolutely love deeper connections. You know, I said that's what I'm about. So I do a really, really cool group coaching program. It's a webinar every Monday night. It's live. And um, uh, check it out. It's a whole a whole $7 for your first month. You know, I don't know about that, right? But well worth the uh, investment. <laughs> I have a... If you go to my website, um, it's TamaraMcCleary.com, and just it's just my name.com, Tamara McCleary. If you go there, you can actually um, see the webinar I did last night free. It'll you know it's it's yours to take a look at and um, sign up. We, at least we can keep in contact. I do send out a lot of videos, a lot of um, I mean I'm all about communication, so. Um, go to my website. Happy to see you there. Since I don't have to type it and worry about web caller, crawlers, um, if you want to email me a direct, you know, private communication, my my email is Tamara at TamaraMcCleary.com. And I'm always happy to um, engage real conversation there. So, yeah, hit my website. Hit my email up. Um, happy to help in any way I can. Happy to serve. And you know, interested in creating real relationships. So if you're interested in that too, you know, let's go for it. Okay. That's great. Anna Jed wanted to come in here for a second. Uh, do, do you have a moment for him if I hop out and let Jed in? Yeah, I kind of, I, Jed, you're going to have to wait. I want Jed on the show anyway. We're going to have to work on that. <laughs> Jed! Uh, but I really, I've got another I call. You, and I know Tamara's got to go too. So we'll have to wait and do it another time. It was really great to have you on too, JS and Michael. Yes. Uh, good to see Michael. you all again. It's good to see you guys. Have a great new year. You, you guys too. too. Have a fantastic new year. You too. Everybody.